Hi, and welcome to Grammar in Use. Today, I would like to talk about tense and aspect with you. Maybe you've heard about tense, or quite likely you've heard about the word tense. So, quite certainly, you've heard of the past tense. You've certainly heard of present tense. And you have also heard of future tense, I expect. Why did I put future in bracket? Well, that, that's a bit deeper into grammar, but let me try and explain it quickly to you. Let's take a look at the word go. The past tense form of go is went. The present is go. And the future is will go or going to. So you can see we need an auxiliary verb here. And so the will future is not really a proper future tense because it needs a will in there. And that's why English only has got two tenses if we're being very correct about that. But we're not going to be too correct about that. So what does tense tell us? Tense tells us, and let me quickly say that in German, die Position einer Handlung in der Zeit. So tense tells us about when something happens. So let me quickly move that down a bit. So just to make, keep it and to make it short, um, we've got three or two tenses rather, the past tense, then we've got the present tense, and of course we have got the future tense. So what about aspect now? The concept of aspect is a bit more difficult, but it's not really difficult. First of all, we could talk about the so-called simple aspect. And again, I'm going to put it in bracket. I'm going to tell you why in just a few seconds. Then we have got the so-called perfective aspect. And we have got the progressive aspect. The progressive tells us that an action is ongoing. So it's taking quite a while. Usually, the progressive tells us that an action is ongoing, so it takes quite a while. In grammatical terms, we can always identify a progressive with an ing ending. But don't confuse, uh, confuse it with the gerund. What about the perfective? The perfective aspect tells us uh, that an action has relevance for another action. So a good example would be the present perfect. I have eaten a sandwich means that I have just finished eating it, but the good news is I am no longer hungry. So this is why it's important for the present. So hence the present perfect. And the simple aspect is really very simple because you can't really recognize it. It's not really special. We've heard about the simple present, I go to school, the simple past, I went to school, and so on. So there is not a lot connected to it. So again, let's write that down in German words. Aspect tells us how one action corresponds to another in the course of time. So we're talking about the so-called Verhältnis einer Handlung zur Zeit. And, as we already mentioned, we've got three different ones here. So,
So we've got the simple, we've got the perfective, and we have got the progressive aspect. Let's take another look at those because they might be a diff bit more difficult to grasp. Again, very simple. The simple aspect means eine Handlung ist abgeschlossen. Then the perfective aspect means eine Handlung bezieht sich auf eine weitere Handlung. And the progressive, the easiest one, eine Handlung dauert an bzw. ist nicht abgeschlossen. So much for theory. Now let's take a look at the second document that you have. You will find it in the description of the video as a link. It is called Die Zeitform des Englischen. Basically, this sheet is nothing very, very special, you might say. It's quite a helpful tool to see which tense is which. But if you are like me, when I was a kid, or a student your age, I got very confused with all those strange tenses, you know. There is the simple progressive, the past progressive, um, the present perfect progressive. I mean, who should know what all these tenses mean? That's where our system of tenses and aspect comes in. Because it actually makes it really, really easy for you to understand how the tenses in English work. Let's quickly take a look at the simple present. So, the aspect in the simple present is simple, so it doesn't really look special at all. However, the tense is the present. So, here we've got an example sentence. He speaks, Peter speaks, doesn't really matter. So it's simple present tense. What about the present progressive? Well, again, the tense here is present, but this time it's progressive, so we know we have to put an ing ending to it. So we're no longer using the word or the sentence he speaks, but he is speaking. And if you take a close look, we have got a progressive here, the speaking, but we also need another form, a present form. So he is speaking. I think you might get the hang of the system, right? So let's take a look at the simple past. Again, aspect, simple, tense, past. So we know we have to change the verb into the past tense, meaning he spoke. Now, what about the past progressive? Well, our tense here is the past and the aspect is progressive. So, we need a past tense form, he was, and we need a progressive, a uh, another verb form. So, here it's speaking again. Okay, those were, were the easy ones, but trust me, it doesn't really get much more difficult than this. Now let's take a look at the present perfect simple. Wow, uh, sounds really complicated, but it is not really. Well, let's start with the tense. The tense is present. Then the aspect is perfective and also simple. So actually we could also just call it the present perfect. We need a past tense, he has, and a perfective verb form of speak, which is spoken. So um, always keep in mind your irregular verbs, speak, spoke, spoken. And the third verb form is the one you will have to use for the perfective. It's called the past participle. Then let's take a look at the present perfect progressive, which is a bit more interesting for us, I guess. Which tense do we have here? Well, the tense is present. So again, we have got a present over here. 
And now we've got two aspects combined, the perfect and the progressive. So the perfect, perfect form here is the being and the progressive is speaking. So we've got three things and we need three word forms, uh, words uh, to, to do that. What about the past perfect simple? Well, again, the tense is the past, the aspect is perfect and simple. Again, we could just say the past perfect, so simple is not really very important in terms of grammatical description. So, the past form is the head and the aspect is spoken. And as a last example here, let's take a look at the past perfect progressive. Well, which tense do we have? We have got a past tense here and we have got it over here, had. We have got a perfect aspect resulting in a been, typically the perfect uh, perfective is built with an is, so being, and the progressive aspect as well, speaking. So, this is the system of tense and aspect. Why should you study it? Well, because it makes grammatical life much, much easier for you. If I tell you, please build me a sentence in the past perfect progressive, you know, well, you need a past tense form, you need a perfected form, and you need a progressive. So, um, let's say Peter had been walking to school all his life. So this would be a, an example for the past perfect progressive. We can play that game with virtually every tense there is in English, but I think for now that is enough.